Hey everybody, welcome back to the next part in my dialing in series for our Line 6 Helix and Podgo and HX Stomp. Today I'm going to be looking at the vintage digital delay. And the reason I wanted to do a specific dialing in video for this delay is it's probably possibly one of the most misunderstood delay blocks we have in the Helix and the other devices. The reason I say that is because I've seen some videos talking about you know, the digital clipping that occurs or potentially occurs within this block. And I don't think really understanding or explaining the real reasons why and actually why that is supposed to be there. So I wanted to kind of debunk some of the myths about this and also answer some of the questions of some of the folks who say they really like this delay but don't use it because of some of these digital artifacts that are actually built into this particular model. So let's go over to HX Edit and take a look. I have this very simple path going on preset. I've just put in a US Deluxe Norm model. Uh, I'm just gonna pull this back. I was messing around with this a little bit before. And nothing else on the path. So this is just as it comes up standard. Uh, 160 ribbon, two inches back, low cut of 80 hertz, high cut of eight kilohertz. Just, just pulled this up um, because it, it, it has a fairly clean sound to it. I'm playing my brand new Vigier Excalibur special. I'm on board with Vigier now as one of their artists and I'm super pumped. These guitars are out of this world. I've never been happier uh, with the guitar as I, I did a video earlier in the week. So here's what the sound is, just this amp model. clean. That's on uh, the second position here. If I go to the bridge pickup, it has a little break up to it, but let's just keep this clean for now. So I'll go with that position. Okay, so let's do this. Let's grab the vintage digital. I'll put a stereo version of it on just to see what the stock settings come up with. Now, here's the problem. What happens is this comes up with a setting of 12 bits on the bit depth and 16 kilohertz on the sample rate right off the shelf, 45% mix. And we'll talk about all these settings in a moment. Scale of 75%, time of 500 milliseconds. Let's hear what this does to it, okay? Okay, it's okay. But now, let's say that we were hitting this with a little more signal. I'll crank the gain up here. Do you hear that? There's this digital clipping, which is not a pleasant sound. And so I've heard a lot of folks tell me personally in messages, I used to use the vintage digital and I put it on and there's this weird digital clipping. So I just take it off because they don't know how to deal with it. Now, some folks think that, oh, we're, we're hitting it with too much uh, signal, too much volume. Uh, and that's the problem. Now, that's a, a good point because it, it's sort of true, but we're not really hitting this with any volume that we necessarily shouldn't be. Our signal path is not clipping. I'm not hitting anything. Uh, I'm not inputting too much signal into the Helix to clip. This clipping is happening within this particular block and it's happening within this particular block by design. And a lot of folks might say, well, why would they do that? Well, they would do that because at these particular settings, that's what a real digital unit would actually act like. So they're being accurate to real life here. Let me explain. First of all, let's go through the actual uh, different parameters we have at our disposal. Well, we have time and I've done other dialing in videos for delays and we understand what time is. This is going to be how long after we hit our initial note that the echoes are going to happen. I like to always change this to more of a musical value, in this case, a quarter note. So let's do that. We could also do it in milliseconds, but we'll deal with the quarter note. Feedback is simple. Again, it's going to tell us how many repeats we're going to get. If I set this low, I get this one repeat. And I, let me just take the scale up to 100 here. Right, essentially turning it into a mono delay. The higher I set this, the more repeats I'm going to get. If I go really extreme, 
it'll just keep going. So we'll just set that at a moderate setting. Um, we'll skip bit depth and sample rate. We'll come back to that. The mix is going to be how much direct signal unprocessed we have versus how much affected signal. So if I take this down to zero, I get nothing. I'm just hearing my direct signal. If I put this up to 50%, it should be about balance between direct and process signal. But there we go with that digital clipping, right? Happens sometimes, doesn't happen other times. Okay. The level is just going to be the overall level so we could properly gain stage this. Most of the time I'm going to leave that at zero dB. The neat thing about this one is we have some modulation we can add uh, to the delayed repeat. So if I crank up the depth here from 2 up to 8.5, we hear kind of a modulation in just the delayed repeats. And again, if I, if I pump the rate up, we can really hear it. Okay, so kind of neat that they included that. I want to turn those down to nothing now so they're not getting in the way of anything else we're hearing. There's that digital clipping again, keep that in mind. Okay, so we have a way of modulating just the delay uh, repeats. Keep in mind that when we have modulation within a delay like this, it's not affecting our dry signal. It's only affecting the delayed repeats after it, which is as we would want it to be. If we want to add something like chorus or some other kind of modulation, to our um, actual dry signal, we would have to do that in our path, okay? Scale is, is the same as any other one I've talked about before in a stereo effect like this. If I have it at 0%, what you're gonna hear is only over here on the left. We're gonna get our repeats, right? If I bring this to 50%, what it's going to do is give me a quick delay over in the right at half the value of whatever I have it set. So I should get an eighth note over on the right side and back to my quarter note over here on the left. Okay, and there's that digital clipping. If I go to 100%, I essentially turn it into a mono delay with the same thing coming out of both speakers, okay? All right, headroom we'll talk about in a moment. And then trails, I'll turn it on. That's just so if we switch snapshots, the, uh, the delay echoes won't get cut off abruptly. They'll continue to trail on. Okay, so let's go back to bit depth and sample rate, which I feel are the two most important things we need to understand inside of this model. First, we have to understand what bit depth and sample rate are. Let's talk sample rate first. So in digital audio, when we are recording, the recording system is taking a whole bunch of samples of whatever sound we are feeding into basically the analog to digital converter. And it's trying its best to recreate the analog signal as it's being fed. So there's something called the Nyquist theory that uh, I'm not gonna go super in depth about it, but you can go study that online. And that says that basically whatever sample rate we set, which is set in hertz or thousands of hertz, kilohertz, right? For instance, if we take a, a really accepted 44,100 hertz or 44.1 kilohertz sampling rate, which is what CD audio quality is, the Nyquist theory says that we need at least that sampling rate to produce frequencies up to half of that number. So, say 44,100 hertz, we need that sample rate to reproduce frequencies in and around 22,000 hertz. Now that's well above human hearing. Uh, nobody can actually hear those frequencies, but it seems like uh, it was chosen for CD because it goes outside of the human hearing and gives enough kind of headroom outside of human hearing that we're going to get all the frequencies we can hear reproduce, reproduce properly. So using that kind of Nyquist theory at 48,000 hertz or 48 kilohertz sampling rate, that theoretically can reproduce frequencies up to about 24,000 hertz. Well, that's fine. That's above our ability to hear. So what the sampling rate actually represents is how many samples per second are being captured to reproduce the analog signal. So that means every second of audio, if we're set at 48 kilohertz, it's taking 48,000 samples of that audio. So the, you know, the way it's reasoned is the more samples we have of that audio per second, the more accurate the reproduction is going to be. Okay, so if we take this and go down to 16 kilohertz, well now this is telling us that 
This is only going to be able to reproduce up to in and around approximately 8,000 hertz of audio. Well, that would be terrible for a full range audio recording where we have cymbals and, you know, on the drums and anything that has information above that. For guitar, probably not as dramatic because it, it kind of starts to get outside the frequency range of what the guitar is gonna be reproducing. Although a mic speaker sometimes can have different artifacts up there. And this allows us to go all the way down to eight kilohertz, which is only going to allow us to reproduce up to approximately four kilohertz in the audio spectrum, okay? So that's what sample rate is. And let's just set this up around 48 kilohertz for now. Bit depth is going to be how much audio information there is going to be in each one of those samples that was taken. And this is kind of an exponential growth, okay? The difference between 16 and 24 is a large amount of information. I'm not gonna get into all the numbers here. You can look this up and it's really fascinating. So this is what they call audio resolution. For each sample, how much information is going to be used to recreate that analog sound that we're feeding into it, okay? So obviously, the higher the bit depth, the more audio resolution, the much larger the digital file is going to be, but the much more accurate it's gonna be represented. And the two ways it's really going to come out is in signal to noise ratio, and headroom before clipping, okay? Those are the two kind of real world things that we're going to see here. So a bit depth of 24 bit, the noise floor is going to be so low that we, we will never be able to hear it. As we move down though, as we will see in some examples, that noise floor becomes much more apparent and our headroom before clipping really disappears, okay? So let's take a look at this and understand why we're getting this clipping. So if I come here and hit this again, you hear very clear digital clipping. Now, one way we can get rid of that is if I raise the bit depth to 24 bits, watch what happens. The digital clipping is gone now. and there's the sound of our delays. So we're hearing 24-bit, 48 kilohertz sampling rate. So it's going to kind of give us out of it what we're putting into it. Okay, so let's do this to hear the difference between sample rate and bit depth. Let's take our mix level up to 100 so we don't have any dry signal, you know, confusing things. So you won't even hear me hit my initial note. All you'll hear are the repeats. So let's start with bit depth. Let's change from 24 to 16. So here's 24. 16. Did you really hear much of a difference? Very subtle there, as it should be. Really, 24 to 16 bit, while theoretically there's a big difference, audibly to us, it's going to be much more subtle, okay? Keep in mind that the processing that's happening here is not affecting our entire signal path, okay? Any processing of lowering the bit depth to, you know, eight bit or six bit or whatever we set it at is happening within this block to just sort of model the behavior of this. But once it comes out of here, and that's shown by if I move my mix level down to zero, it's not going to mimic the same behaviors. So let's go down to 14. What we did notice is digital clipping. Hear that? If I go back to 16, there's no digital clipping. Go down to 12, again, digital clipping. That's not gonna get any better as we go down. Clipping. Other than the clipping though, the noise floor is coming up, but I'm not hearing that. I'm not really perceiving that. So 
I personally find the difference between 24 down to 8, 10 down to 8, let's listen to 8. We're still getting the occasional clipping, digital clipping, because of the lack of headroom, but I'm still not hearing a huge amount of noise. Watch what happens when I go to 6. Do you hear that digital noise? The noise floors come way up, but only on the repeats. So we now have the clipping, but we also have this sort of quantization noise. Which is great, because that's the point of this delay. We want something that sounds kind of trashy in a digital way to mix and blend in with our direct signal. So wonderful, this is what this is for. And we, we want that kind of imperfect sound. Much like in the way, you know, uh, something with tubes would add maybe a, a nice tube distortion coloration, this is actually going out of its way to add those sort of normally unwanted digital artifacts, but maybe in a creative way and gives us the ability to add those. Okay, so we hear the difference between 24 and six. Let's listen again, here's six bit. Here's 24. Hear how pristine that is? There's no digital noise. There's no clipping. Here. We have clipping and we have this digital noise because the noise floor has come up. Okay? So that's going to be up to us to decide where we want to be in there. But now, let's go back. Where, where were we getting that clipping from? Right there. You hear that clipping. You know, and I've seen videos about this where they say, well, it's because we're hitting the input of this too hard. Well, that's partially true, but what if we don't want to adjust the level of what we're hitting into it because it's, it's, it's balanced for everything else? We can come down to the headroom control here. Now, watch what happens. If I hit this, I get the digital distortion. Right, that clicking. If I just bump up the headroom, let's try 2 dB, see what happens. We still have the clipping. Let's go 4 dB. Still a little touch of clipping. Let's go to 6 dB. Still a hair of clipping there. Let's bump this up to 8 dB. It's gone. We've still maintained the 14 bits, but we've given it some headroom so it's not going to clip. take this back down to close to zero, we get that digital distortion back. So depending, you know, we can go use the bit setting. Let's say we had a six bit setting and we go, I like that digital noise that I can blend in, but I don't want that harsh clipping. Well, I can come in over here, add in some, it seems to be gone there. Might be on the edge still. I mean, again, we could come up, you know, back to where we were at eight. Now we don't have that digital clipping, but we do have that kind of digital noise, which is kind of the purpose of this and really kind of cool in the right scenario. You really hear when I hold it up. And if you really want to be safe, I mean, you can take the headroom all the way up to 12. You're still getting that, that digital noise. And again, listen to this. If I go up to 24 bit. Very pristine. 16. 14. What you're hearing at eight is that noise starts to become slightly audible. Mm -hmm. 
very audible at six bits. So that's the difference you're hearing very clearly in the different bit, bit rates, okay, or the audio resolution. Let's go back to 24. Now let's examine sample rates, okay? This is going to be the one that's going to be even somewhat more important, I would think, simply because at 48 kilohertz, we're getting a very pristine signal. It's all the frequencies that we need to be represented are, or be recreated are. As we go down though, what you're gonna notice is the delayed repeats are going to get darker. Okay, so in combination with the setting like eight or six bits with that, we get a very vintage sound, but in a digital manner. So let's listen to the difference of the sample rates. Here's 48 kilohertz. 44.1. 24, 22.05, 16. Now you hear it sort of darkening up a bit. Twelve. Definite darkening up now. 11.025. 8. Let's listen to 24 versus 8. 8. Very dark at 8 because it's basically only able to reproduce frequencies up to in and around approximately 4 kilohertz. Whereas up at 48 kilohertz, we can get all frequencies up to 24 thousand hertz or 24 kilohertz reproduced. Okay, so this is gonna be very pristine. As we go down, it's gonna get more dark. So if we had a setting of say eight kilohertz with a bit depth of six, we now have these dark repeats kind of buried in this digital noise. I take that eight kilohertz and try it with different bit depths. Still noise, but less noise. Up to 10. So does that clear up what those two controls actually do? So we have to keep in mind, the lower the bit depth, pretty much anything under 16, we've gotta be careful that we aren't gonna get those glitchy digital distortion artifacts, unless of course we want that. So let's do this. Let's actually talk a little bit about that. Let's say we were mixed with our mix control, where I just wanted a little bit mixed in. So let's, let's take this at 30% with zero headroom. <laughs> So I have a subtle delay. My direct signal is not being affected to a large degree. What I mean by that is we're hearing more direct signal. Let's bring our bit depth down to six. Now let's hear if we get any of that digital clipping. Let's just take the headroom way down so we do get it, just so we can hear. Okay, there, let's just. Okay, there we have digital clipping, okay? Even if we mix that way lower though. Maybe we want that glitchy kind of sound mixed in with our direct signal. 
because we're still getting a nice clean direct signal, but we get those little glitches going in and around the, and let's take the headroom right down so that the delays have that digital distortion at a lower level. Right? Maybe that for creative purposes is a sound we want. Well, we have the ability to do it if we understand how this works. So a lot of folks online have always said that, oh no, that's terrible the way the digital delay works. It has this digital distortion that comes into it quite easily. And I go, yes, that's the point. If you don't want that, then go use something else. Use a transistor tape where you don't really have any risk of that happening unless you hit it with just a ridiculous amount of, of uh, input going in, but that's just gonna clip the whole signal path of the helix itself, right? So if we don't necessarily want that, maybe this is the wrong delay for us. One of the points of this delay, in my opinion, would be so we could introduce little bits of that in as part of a, you know, our sound in a creative way. But it's easy to get rid of it if we don't, we just use our headroom control to bump it up to, you know, I had it up here at 12, I'll just leave it there so we're avoiding that. So um, we see what we can get here now though, if I have the mix, let's even go to 50% so we have some direct signal. You know, at a sample rate of eight kilohertz and a bit depth of six, <laughs> You know, all of that noise we're hearing there, if you find it too much, you can bring your mix control back. You know, if you wanted more of your delayed echoes with less of that noise, you put it to 8-bit. and so on and so forth. So lots of possibilities with delay. this delay once we understand what each control is doing. Now, with something like that, let's say we're happy with that setting. Kind of lo-fi, but in a digital way, I could start adding in some modulation if I so desired. Let me just crank the depth so you can hear it. Hear the warbliness to the delayed echoes. Actually messes with the tuning and everything. So let's bring that down to a more reasonable amount. Now, if I bring the rate up, that's going to move. Now, 
Now again, that might sound overwhelming, but we could also bring our mix control down so it's not kind of detuning so mixed in with our direct signal so much. come into that with even more gain, let's say. So some very cool effects. So I hope I covered everything. I hope that's clear now how that can be used. Don't shy away from this vintage digital delay because you're hearing some of those clipping artifacts. That could be one reason you want to use it if used properly with the proper mix control with the pro or just getting rid of it with the headroom control. You don't necessarily have to go outside of this and hit the front of this with less signal. You're not necessarily improperly gain staged simply because you're getting some digital clipping from this as this vintage digital distortion is designed to add that in case we want it, okay? Some people doesn't, don't want it and that's fine. Nobody's gonna tell you you have to, but just go into this with the right kind of thinking to look at it as a tool where we may want that, but there's an easy way to get rid of it as well without having to alter our whole signal path or think that the entire path is somehow digitally clipping now. That's happening within this block on purpose, but it can be gotten rid of and we have a lot of really interesting sounds in this delay. So kudos to the folks at Line 6 and hats off to them for putting such an interesting tool but I think it's really important that we all understand how this can be used to the best effect. So I hope that video was helpful, guys. I really hope it doesn't. I hope maybe it encourages some of you to dive in with the Vintage Digital and look for some really cool, glitchy, crazy digital type sounds, all right? Or just use it as a nice, pristine digital delay. Thank you guys so much for watching. Thanks for tuning in. I always appreciate the support. I really hope you enjoyed that. Like the video and uh, please and share it with anybody who you think would get some use out of it. Please subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell notification to get notified when I put new content out. Thanks again so much guys for tuning in and I will be back soon with some more content. Ciao for now.